the sound. Yeah, as you say, Sakura has four out of his five games so far this split on that Orn. Rumble will be the lock for Odo, one of his well-known picks, one of his legacy picks. And we'll see if SK decides to go for that Orn. Of course, it can be flexed, but I understand why you'd immediately go towards Odo because he's the player that you think of when you see this Rumble pick. And when we look at the composition, we're seeing a lot of teamfight presence come out from Schalke already. The Misfortune and the Rumble offer a huge mid-game power spike, and they're very versatile in what they can offer in the early to mid-game. But there's the Orn. We were talking about it. Yeah, really, really difficult prediction <laughs> to make. Uh, could have been the GP, Benny. It, it could have been, been that one GP game that he's played. Look Looks like he's going back to comfort, as it were. Um, but SK going for a little bit more on the scaling aspect. You have Senna, very strong in the late game, thanks to a very long range. On top of the fact you have easy engage with the Orn. Both junglers very early game focused. So now we're looking for things like mid laners, and we're looking for things uh, like the support as well. Tom Genj has to be a high priority. I wouldn't be surprised to see Schalke ban that one away. And Leona is something yep. you have to consider. Uh, Schalke will want to get their hands on to give it a strong matchup alongside the Misfortune. Having MF Leona in that bottom lane, even into a Senna who can use that Curse of the Black Mists, it's actually still quite easy to hit both your Solar Flare and your Zenith Blade because you know Senna's always sitting right in the middle of that big, big black circle. The Braum is the first man from Schalke. It's a defensive support. There's the Gangplank from SK alongside the Cassio. I do want to bring the thought into your mind that Orn can be flexed down to true. support, of Very course. True. Uh, but with Sacre having played it so many times this split, I you mean, expect we see, it to be top. We see it mid lane more than we see it support, my true, friend. True, uh, true, we've true. seen it as an answer to a lot of very aggressive mid lane champions. Speaking of things like the Yasuo, the Pantheon, all still been left up and available, but I don't think they're going to be a high priority for now. SK are expecting this Rumble to actually be in the mid lane. They did ban away the Gangplank just in case. Um, but of course, they ban away the Cassio as well, so kind of covering all their bases, yeah. it seems like. Uh, of course, the Tom Kench ban did come through from Schalke. Wouldn't be surprised right now to see the Leona. I consider it a pretty solid pick into the Nautilus. Pairs it very well with Misfortune. And we get to see Dreams on an engaged champion. I like it a lot more when we actually get to see him be that facilitator, be one of the engaged tools, because one of the issues I think Schalke suffered from when they played with Gilius and they put him on these engaged champions was he wasn't able to find a lot of successful engages, and that responsibility often fell on Odo. We'll see if things change up as he actually decides to lock in the Thresh. Uh, Thresh is still like pseudo engage, a landing hook. So you, if you can start sure. off a team fight, although you don't have that big go button in the form of a solar flare. I do like Dreams on the Thresh. He played it a couple of times last year, or once last year. Didn't win on it, but. But uh, maybe he'll win this time. And alongside that, <laughs> maybe. Schalke, I mean, Schalke don't have a great record of winning so far. That's so true. I don't want to be too positive about it. The Aatrox is the final pick for Schalke and Fear. We'll see where SK go with their last pick. So final pick, the Rumble they now know is in the mid lane. Of course, Aatrox can still be flexed. And SK, they're hovering a couple of options. The Mordekaiser is a very flexible pick as well. And it looks like that they are going to answer with that in the mid lane for Gen X. And it will likely be the Rumble into this Mordekaiser mid. I wonder what sort of build we'll see from the Rumble, whether we'll see the uh, Doin B Predator roaming Rumble or whether we'll see the more conventional uh, that we often see in the mid lane with things like the Comet as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, Schalke, I think that they've drafted themselves a pretty solid mid-game comp. I think they have a lot of options, a lot of control in the early laning phase. They should be able to get push in top, mid, and even bot in the early game, which should give Lorox a lot of options. But I think that the scaling advantage should edge towards SK. They have long-range engage, they have a lot of damage coming out from Senna, and because of the Mordekaiser being able to remove a target from the, the yep. fight, you also have a very solid and reliable front line with which the Senna can play around. The question is, will SK be able to get there? And Perhaps that's one of the best strategies going up against Schalke because they struggled so often to actually close out games and get those good leads. Um, maybe just drafting for scaling is the best bet against them. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. So far this split, Schalke have averaged minus 1,300 gold at the 15 minute mark. So if you're planning to scale into any team, a team that tends to be at a deficit early on, is a good team to do it against. Schalke with the mid game comp, pushing lanes, pressure for Lorox if he wants to utilize it. SK looking for the side of scaling. They do have some uh, early game because they've got the least in. He can mitigate some of that pressure, but a lot of scaling on the side of SK. Already picked up a win, of course, this split. Schalke sitting at 0-5 at the bottom of the standings with Vitality. A win today, perhaps, well, it would be a good sign for the team. I'm not going to say it would be the start of a run of wins for them. Well, let's also not forget that SK's only win was against Vitality, yep. which was in the first week of the split as well. And I feel like that Schalke, SK and Vitality sit at the bottom of the league right now, um, trying to avoid that last place spot. And 
every win is very important. You know, we're three weeks in. It's one of those things where if you're trading wins back and forth, going one and one, then that chance of playoffs is very realistic. But you know, even though we're only in week three, you start you have to start having that conversation because if you come out of it zero and six, then that road to climb back up becomes very very challenging. Definitely does. Uh, early doors, both uh, both teams are just spread out across the map. No real fights happening as of yet. I do want to point out the Oracle's lens sitting on limit. You usually see this on supports when they want to go for a late invade, and that seems to be what SK are setting up for. Dreams is in position to place a ward. I don't believe he's placed one as of yet, but the ward up here by the Razorbeaks tends to be how you make sure you don't get invaded without any knowledge of it. it looks like the delayed invade is definitely coming through from SK. Ooh. Dreams... Didn't use the ward. No, he's not going to do it. But it looks like the Rek'Sai is starting on the top side anyway. Going to have a bit of a pull from Odo Amne. The question is, will they be aware of this? The ping is coming down. You'll see the positioning of Dreams will keep vision. And so he should be able to spot yeah. out ASK. Doesn't need to spend the uh. ward. Um, and the sweep will end up being wasted. No benefit gain. Of course, SK will be able to confirm that there is no vision here. But Schalke have the information that they need. Their red buff is being stolen. Lorox can use this as an opportunity to immediately move towards the enemy red buff and take that one away. Look as well in the mid lane. Immediate push comes out from Awadargate. In the top lane as well, Odoamne is going to be in a position to push and assist his jungler should he need it. So everything is safe and sound to allow Lorox to take this for free. Yeah, it feels very easy for Lorox because, as you said in Pick and Ban, they have pushing lanes in the top and in the mid lane. If your team can respond quicker, this sort of invade is pretty easy for you to do. Of course, what has now happened is SK have effectively split the map. So now what Trick is going to be doing is he'll be spending a lot of his time towards the bot side and we can already see a gank is looking to happen. Here comes Trick, they're going on Forgiven straight away. The Ignite is ticking, Forgiven flashes away. Trick on the chase, but he's going to get the kill underneath the tower. Dream's unable to save his AD carry. Absolutely horrendous play from the Schalke bot lane. I was just about to talk about... Talk blah blah blah. <laughs> I was just about to talk about the fact that Trick has split the map. He's on the bot side. Yeah. You know he's just invaded your red buff and you have to play defensively because, hey, your jungler isn't there. The enemy jungler is. This is basically 101 and Forgiven and Dreams get engaged on. They give away their lives. They have no summoner spells. This bot lane already falling to disaster three minutes in. Losing so many minions to that turret as well. Odo pressuring up here on the top side, but really the game, it, it's not often you can say it can be decided by moments like this, but this is such a big misplay from Schalke. No summoners left on this bot lane. Now, admittedly, the wave is obviously in a very awkward spot, but you're in this situation where you just have to respect <laughs> that you can get ganked this early on and they don't. Forgiven refused to give up the farm. He refused to just play defensively, and he ends up losing his life as a result. I mean, I'll get flashing forward straight into Genax, who pulls him back with the Death's Grasp, but Trick has already gone, and Schalke have actually found a couple of kills here very quickly. Abadaga gets one on the board. Genax trying to trade in. Here comes Crown Shot looking for the damage on Dreams. Dreams rooted up with the last embrace. Genax almost falling as well. Lorlox going back in, but won't find the connection. Ends up being a two for one trade in the jungle. All right, Medic, I'm starting to get an idea of what kind of game this is going to be now. I am too. <laughs> Ready All right, so... Let me find our clown hats. Yeah, after, after the early shenanigans in the bot lane, it appears that we have some action in the river. So what happens exactly? We can see that Trick tries to contest Lorox, who is not in a position to really uh, force this from Trick because it's much easier for Abadagi and Dreams to collapse. That's how they start this early skirmish off. They quickly get two kills, and they think that with this numbers advantage, they can turn this into a favorable trade. Of course, with the arrival of Crown Shot and the heal, that actually forces Abadagi to disengage. Perhaps he had a lot of his abilities on cooldown because he really didn't want to commit to that, allowing Genex to walk away with his life as well. So, ends up being two for two overall. Even after the early deficit, Forgiven found himself in due to that those shenanigans. He's now back in the laning phase. Crown Shot now has no summoner spells and uh, Schalke actually had the gold lead. There were three flashes left up in the entire game, Bedius. One on each of the top laners because, of course, they never impact the game. <laughs> and Limit has his as well. So, we'll see if Limit can use that in the bottom lane as he does get hooked by Dreams. You did mention in Pick and Ban you wanted to see Dreams on a more proactive champion who has engaged potential, and he's had a few engages so far. Trick is going to come up towards the top lane as Odoamne just walks away. Pretty easy for the Aatrox to escape. He's going to be aware of what the jungler is up to. Sakurai has been bullied a lot in this laning phase. Once he hits level 6 and... Well, when he changes to Ignite, he actually has a surprising amount of kill pressure and is a lane that SK could look to try and find an early gank with. You can see Trick still hovering around, wants to help Sakurai push in this wave, and this will give Sakurai the opportunity to go back to base. Yeah, just getting those recall timers off when you can. 
always important, as you said, for given... He didn't actually get a kill or an assist in the lane, but has equalized that CS deficit he had earlier on. So, sitting on about 130... Oh, he's just gone back and picked up a couple of items. So he was sitting on about 700, 800 gold there. And he's got himself double longsword. Wait, how has he just gone back? Did I just... Did I totally mess that up? I didn't see the I'm double really longsword at all. I'm really Okay, something happened there with the <laughs> double longsword. <laughs> Here it is in his inventory. <laughs> We're nah. using couriers now, we Dota. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there, Medic. Let's just uh, casually slide past that one. As we can see, two items picked up for Forgiven. And a double longsword, going to give him a bit of extra AD in the laning phase. Will help his uh, trading, at the very least. You can see that Rumble using the high wave clear to get push in the mid. And then he's going to move down into the river to help maintain control for this early cloud Drake. That 10% Alt cooldown reduction going to be valuable for the team like Schalke when you have ultimates like the Rumble ultimate, the uh, Misfortune ultimate, all very, very valuable indeed. But it's actually SK that are in a position to start this one off first and Teleport will be up for Sakurai, won't be for Odoamne. Schalke should likely avoid trying to contest this one for now. Yeah, you don't really want to trade when you could be at a man disadvantage pretty quickly. That's the Dragon. Two missed fragments for Crown Shot and SK with the early objective. It's not something we've seen too much of them, uh, from them across the course of the split. Both Schalke and SK have actually really struggled in the early game. And I think we were both wondering who would come out on top because you can see neither of them have high kills and assists at the 15 minute mark. Both of them tend to be behind in gold at the 15 minute mark and neither of them are very good at taking dragons either. So. It's a little bit of a battle it's, at the bottom of the table. It's almost like we have a, an eighth and a ninth place team battling against each other. Man. I just like to it highlight is. sometimes <laughs> that yeah, I mean, they like, struggled. The, uh, the numbers kind of speak for themselves, as you rightly said. And uh, honestly, no one's really winning right now. It's still very close. So both of them kind of both beating and also keeping their record at the same time. Schrodinger's game. <laughs> <laughs> Until we get to the end of it, both teams are both winning and losing. Okay, so Vedi. We're eight minutes in. We've seen both teams have four rays, have attacks in to the, towards the enemy team, but I'm really thinking about what happens next. Schalke, we talked about them having this mid-game spike, having pressure at those two items or so. We'll see if they can utilize that because Abadage hasn't been roaming much from this mid lane on the Rumble, has hit the level seven, but isn't going Predator, so isn't looking to impact the rest of the map. I want to see Schalke trying to take some fights soon. Otherwise, you wonder if the scaling from SK will just come in, come into effect. Uh, I don't think they need to be... By too, soon, I mean the next yeah. 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, a... that's not really the definition of soon, <laughs> but I realized when I <laughs> said soon, say. that's <laughs> not the word I should have used. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing you don't speak for a living. Um, now, Schalke, well, that fight that you're looking for may be happening soon. They're Betty. taking it soon, This is when you start to build the tension. Ooh. The dramatic music begins to cue. Are we going camping? Because this is intense right now. Really? That's how you build drama and suspense. I know no by fight making happened. a pun. <laughs> I knew no fight was gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so Lolox gets the rift tower for free. SK didn't want to take that fight. Yeah, so they're gonna walk away with the rift herald. Um of course the Drake wasn't alive, so it couldn't be traded in that side of the map. Now the question is where will Schalke look to use this Rift Herald? They do have a wave stacked up top, but Oduamne is going to use that as an opportunity to reset. Something that Schalke could do is actually invest it towards the bot side of the map to try and free Forgiven and Dreams from this two versus two, start moving this bot lane around a little bit more, try and get some gold into the back pocket of this misfortune. And given that the bot side camps are up for Lorox, that is likely the direction that he will be heading in in the near future. Seems like you are right on the money there. Schalke do actually have a couple of control wards here that will spot Limit out as he comes towards the mid lane. Limit maybe going to try and clear this one out. Does have to be a little bit cautious, but Nautilus, of course, with the dredge line, can just hook his way away. Even steals away the Scryer's Bloom. It's something I love doing as support. Nesgrass not quite going to connect here in the mid lane, but Genex yeah, still has the ultimate. Even if Abadage is winning out the trade. So, Medic, you'll notice that Abadage is rushed early Sork Boots. Obviously, early magic penetration on Rumble, very valuable. But by getting the Tier 2 Boots as well, the extra movement speed that you get allows you to sidestep a lot of the skill shots that Mordecai tries to hit on you. So, I like the early purchase. And again, you're seeing it. Every time that E comes out from Gen X, it's going to be sidestepped by Abadage. And he's going to get a lot of these favorable trades out. And uh, one of the great things about Rumble as well is uh, you can just 
push the wave while also harassing, so you force your opposition into a very awkward situation where if they miss those skill shots, it's always going to hurt you a lot more than you originally think. You can see Lorox and Abadaga coming up here towards the top lane. Sakurai being very defensive, looking to clear out the wave as much as he can, but this appears like it might be a Rift Herald use in the top lane. You want to get as many plates yes. down as possible before you put the Rift Herald in. Sakurai is going to step forward now knowing that the Rumble is not on his way. It lands the knockoff onto Lorox, but that Rift Herald is just going to get a charge off and it should be able to take at least a couple of plates off the turret. So they're going to put the gold into Odo Amne. The weight is going to fall on the Aatrox's back. Still not too bad. He's going to spike hard in the mid game. Uh, so oh, see a hook flash. Hook. Abadago still has his flash. Put into the realm of death and now flashes away. But Genex is going to lock him in place for the moment. Dreams on his way as well as here comes Forgiven. And the fight really begins in the mid lane as the equalizer comes out. Limit goes gold and one down already as Abadage falls. Forgiven's going to get to Lantern, but here comes the TP. Dredge line doesn't quite connect. Odo's joining the fight from the top side. That's another one for Schalke. They equalize the scoreboard, but here comes Crown Shot. Is Odo going to overstep because it's Sakurai pushing forward with the Bellows breath? Death's grass not connecting. Last embrace does though. Sakurai pulled in. He spots his stopwatch. The kick away. Dreams. Well, Trick gave him a route to safety and Dreams gets pulled back, has to flash. Ends up being a one-for-one one in the mid lane. Tense fight between the two teams. As you rightly said, Medic, only one death on both sides, but the Dragon is about to spawn in nine seconds. It looks like Schalke have the slightly healthier team, but no, they're deciding not to go for it for now. They're going to look to reset, spend some of the gold, and you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, Janax picking up the Proto Belt as well. Uh, teleport is available for Abadage, so not the end of the world for him. He should be able to uh, rejoin the fray. So I'd really like to see Odo back, because he's sitting on about 1,300 gold and there's an Ocean Drake on the rift. If SK get the Ocean Drake, they're that much closer to the soul. It will either be an Infernal or a Mountain. And you can see, actually, it looks like Shalka have decided they don't want to fight around it. They don't want to go for it. But giving up this ocean with the intent of playing around the next few dragons when they hit those first item spikes, when they hit those two item spikes. Yeah, um, I do feel, though, that they could have been in better positions to look to fight for those. Uh, I think that they haven't taken a great advantage of Odo Amne's teleport. They've heavily invested in keeping him in that 1v1 in the top lane. And of course, due to the early shenanigans that have been bought, Forgiven hasn't felt strong enough. So they've mainly just avoided these fights. Uh, but they're nearing the point where they should start to look for these uh, early engagements because we talk a lot about scaling. We talk about how later into the game it's going to be harder for Schalke to win these games, especially when you think about uh, they don't have the most reliable engage. A lot of it comes off the back of Dreams looking for a pick because yep. Rek'Sai is going to not be the great, greatest engage. And while a Rumble Ultimate is great, uh, as I speak about engage. Oh, Janax just TP'd in behind us. I would argue really has nowhere to go. The Brittle is there, but he's already in the realm of death. Janax will be able to chase him down. Abadage just oversteps. Yeah, tier two boots aren't going to help you this time, G uh, Abadage, as uh, Janax does find a quick kill. Great use of the teleport. Should set them up to try and secure some plates in the bot side of the map as Lorox is looking to uh, intervene. But nice to see SK being a little bit proactive on the map. Not something that we normally see from this team. Usually much slower, and we heard it from Abada uh, Abadage. We heard it from Yamato on the desk when he talked about how... Uh, SK, they're a team that often watches the game happen around them, and uh, it's nice to see them make these kind of plays. Good deep teleport, very easy to come in from behind Abadage. He doesn't have his flash from the previous exchange. Lorox isn't close enough. Abadage thought he was safe because mid had prio, they had control of the river, but he doesn't quite see that ward behind him, and he ends up getting collapsed on. And uh, you can see what Abadage was thinking as you say, Lorox being nearby, but. Good teleport in. Does mean it's on cooldown, of course. Abadagas just used his to get back down towards the bottom lane. Odo's is up if Schalke wants to take a fight in the ensuing minutes, but still a while before the next dragon is available. Rift Herald will be up in just a short while. I'll see if Schalke wants to go for the second Herald. Oh, great play from Trick as he lands the kickback underneath the turret. Now there's the route to chase. Oh, that was beautiful. That was sublime from Trick. Clean play there. Uh, little to break down. Trick with just a really good insect. Odo Omni didn't have his flash to get out of that one. I like the fact that Odo Omni used his ultimate as quickly as possible to get out of range of the turret, but the, the chain CC from the Nautilus and the Lee Sin was more than enough to find that kill. And now SK is still a little bit behind in gold. It's basically even now as we get to the 15 minute mark. Honors square between the two teams and the Rift Herald started up immediately by SK. They have the advantage on this top side. Now Odo has teleport. It looks like Shaka want to fight this. Yeah, but they are a man down. Odo does, as you rightly said, have the TP. Coming in. SK is split up. Trick's still on it. Saka's gonna land the knockback. The equalizer coming out. Trick 
Didn't have the smite. Looks like they get it. Trick will be able to jump out of this. And SK get away scot free. Well, the awkward part there for Schalke was they tried to engage through this choke point, but because of the Orn ultimate, they actually couldn't get through it. So even though a teleport came through from Oduwame and SK was split, Schalke couldn't actually commit to the fight. And this is what we talked about. Their engage isn't the strongest. If they don't land a hook, uh, if they don't find a good flank, Schalke actually can't really start a fight. Yeah. You know, we talked about maybe they could have gone for the Leona in the draft, offering that slightly stronger engage tool, but by putting themselves in this situation, it's a lot harder to force these mid-game fights that they're really looking for. And it's a weakness we've seen in Shaoku across the last few weeks, just that inability to... Foss Kuring was describing it yesterday as make a fist to punch someone. It feels like all of the fingers are working independently and they can't quite find the way to get all five fingers combined to actually land a knockout blow. Oh, that's, a, that's a good descriptor. Yeah. I quite like that. And uh, it's ironic because when you, when you look at SK, they're kind of a team that that just kind of watches the fists from a distance. Yeah. So in theory, you have this team with someone watching someone trying to form a fist and they just awkwardly look <laughs> at each other. Um, but for now, SK have been in the driver's seat for the majority of the game, still on the goal deficit though. Of course, that is because Schalke have just secured themselves a tower. With SK's Rift Herald, they should be able to equalize this just a little bit. And with the Dragon spawning in about 40 seconds, We'll see which teams look to contest. I think Schalke should try to force it because that's their best avenue of coming back. I say coming back into the game. We're trying to utilize the strengths of their comp. Uh, and I think it's really important that they try and look for these fights as soon as possible because it's only going to get harder the later the game goes. Clock is ticking for Schalke. As you say, the Dragon about to spawn. Rifteld used in the bot lane to add a little bit of pressure down here. That charge should be able to take it out alongside the crown shot, just getting a couple of auto attacks in when he can making sure that Shelly gets her charge in. The turret falls, and now we'll see. Schalke, we saw them try and fight around the last Rift Herald. Here, they have to up the tempo. They have to do something. Lorox going in. Great flash. Crownshot in the Black Mist. We'll get us away. And Crownshot burns both summoners. Will SK give up the Ghost on the Dragon? Will they say, we don't need to fight it. We're two up. Or will they just get mid prior and go for the turret instead? I think that's the easier play for SK. It won't be the fastest, of course, because of Senna. Oh, actually, they're kind of dividing and conquering right now. Schalke have decided to hold on to the mid-tower as the Drake goes down. Lorox, of course, no flash. So while he could commit to this, there may no be escape route for him. Here comes Sakura with the ult. Sakura looking for the call of the Forge God, but a great hook from Dreams puts him out of his equalizer. Not too well placed as SK push towards the Dragon. Trick gets it, third of the game for them. And now Lorox is in the middle of SK. He's going to be able to back away. Sakura forced off towards the top side. Janax in the Realm of Death. Hook doesn't quite connect, but SK will sacrifice him. One man down, but a dragon in their pocket. Schalke could not go for the steal because Genax used the ultimate to lock Lorox out of that option. This does bring SK to three drakes, but SK lose their mid laner and they may lose this mid tower. Let's see if Crown Shot can hold the line. The issue for Schalke is they just can't take these turrets. They just can't take these objectives quickly enough. Still waiting on the first completed item from Abadage. Looks like he went Oblivion Orb and then is going towards a Leandris instead of completing the Morello Nomicon. I'm sure some LCK commentators will be very happy with that decision. Not a huge amount of healing. Wait, wait, wait. From the side of SK. He hasn't finished the item yet. We'll see. <laughs> I'm giving him the <laughs> benefit of the doubt. There's still time. <laughs> There's still, still time. time to disappoint. Anyway, MS. so. Uh, you talked about the hook uh, from Dreams to interrupt that engage. Very well played by him. And then keep your eyes on Lorox. He's going to get ulted by Genax, preventing him from stealing that one away. At this point, SK have decided, okay, let's just disengage. We need to fight them now. Genax tries to run away, but then the Realm of Death ends. He flashes, but then a good knockup from Odoamne interrupts any opportunity for escape. So Shark will walk away with the kill. Do have the gold advantage still. But again, SK, three Drakes working yeah. towards that fourth will be the mountain. Offering that uh, big shield and also offering a, a couple more resistances to the already pretty tanky SK line. I'll be honest, I'm very glad that we've had this pace of dragons uh, quite quickly consecutively after each other because I was worried that we'd get to a game where, you know, two dragons to either team, it keeps going and keeps going. 20 minutes later, you get towards the soul, you get towards the elder dragon. But with I mean, SK keeping the tempo up like this, you expect it to be a slightly more rapid affair. I mean, we talked about it, right? Uh, in the draft, we. Maybe the best thing to do against Schalke is just draft scaling because they haven't showcased an ability to get a lead yeah. and they also haven't showcased an ability to close out a game, which means that maybe if you just play for the late game and just wait, uh, you're guaranteed to get to that point. And Schalke is in a position now where they need to try and force these fights, but they don't have the strongest tools in order to do it. Uh, so 
The question is, will SK actually then try to force these late game fights? Because this has also been an issue for them in the past. That's true. That's true. Maybe they'll hope that Shalka will try and set up plays like this. Sakura going in. Dawning Shadow will heal him up just a tad. And see the damage coming out. And Lorwok's going to jump in, but he's underneath the turret. Lorwok is dead. That's one. Sakura gets the outplay. He's going to burn for it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the bullet time came out. It's forgiven. Picks up a kill onto Crown Shot. Maybe Crown Shot distracted by the play in the bot side. Two for one so far in favor of Shalka. Teleport coming in towards this mid lane turret as it's Genax joining the party. But Odo Amre is actually caught out Trick now as Trick jumps away with the safeguard. Ends up being two for one overall as Shalka try and make plays on two sides of the map. Yeah, a lot of uh, small skirmishes happening across the board. I think the top tower also went down in that exchange, which of course Shalka is going to immediately equalize. Still sitting on the gold lead for now, even if it is a small one. And. Uh, once we get the replay, we'll see exactly what happened in the mid lane because I'm really fascinated as to how Crown Shot died in that situation. So, of course, he does have no flash available to him. Yeah, my Dreams invested his, so I assume it was flash a flash. Play. Flash play flash is my play. thought. Well, let's see. You're predicting flash play. There it is. Support main Always knows flavor. what it is. There's no point flashing if you're going to like flash hook. You don't need to it's predict true. it. He hasn't got flash. It's very true, Medic. This is why you're Hit him with the main. flay. Yeah, and he does. Finds the kill. Crown shot ends up losing his life. Mid tower still alive though. Leandri's now completed for Abadage. And uh, that's going to offer him a lot of damage. Big item power spike for the Rumble. Also level 13. So he'll have uh, five points in both his Q and E. And so right now, Shalka feels very happy, feels very strong. Infinity Edge done on the Misfortune as well. Like, these are all the power spikes you want to be seeing. If you're a Shalka fan, you're like, oh, we're tough, we're strong. But we have no fear. I mean, yes, that good one, Medic. You're nice one. full of them today, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's one of those days, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, uh, but they have to find a good fight. Their best bet is the Drake, which is spawning in 45 seconds. SK already investing vision around this area of the map. You can see the bot lane is being pushed in right now uh, for Genex. So he's going to push this one in, happy as can be. Mid lane is going to be hard to get priority, but it doesn't matter because they're using this pressure in order to get this deep vision in in the bot side jungle. And then... Uh, free of any contention from Shalka, who's invested a little bit more into the top side. Shalka's going to have to invest their five men to force their way through the river now. That's what they're going to do. There is a TP ward behind for Odo I mean, if he wants to get there. It's all the way down towards the bottom lane, though, which is a long, long way away, as Venius very kindly highlights it for me. SK cleared out a lot of the vision. Genax standing. Bodyguard. Stalwart. Strong. Death's Grass. Going to pull back Lorox, but not going to be able to find the connection they want. Two seconds on the mountain, and this is how you build the tension, Betty. Yes, could be the deciding fight. You feel if that infer uh, the mountain soul goes over to SK, it could be done, though. So Ooh, ult already Shalka. gone for Dreams, though. He was trying to catch Sakre out, but you can't. Ah, but SK's now Come split in. up. You can see that Shalker actually have priority in the river. Here we go. Here we Sakre go. still Dreams. has the ult, though. Hook. Bellow's breath comes out. Odoame is going to try... Oh, that equalizer. It's going to separate them. Crown shot and limit off towards the top side. Donny Shadow comes out as the dragon resets. Lorox in the realm of death, but Odoamne is going to be kicked away. Trick trying to take it before Lorox can get back in. Limit off towards the top side is fighting. He's just acting as a bouncer, acting as a bodyguard. Lorox steals it away for Shalka. And now the fight continues. Lorox with a double knockup. The shutdown coming out. It's forgiven who's gone down. They're chasing onto Crown Shot, but Abadaga is going to go down as well. Odoamne getting chased, but the hook from Dreams will not save him today. It's an ace for SK. Shalka, you got the mountain, Drake, but at what cost? And SK just clean their way through Schalke Null Fear. They have their eyes set on the Baron now, and there is no one standing in their way. SK trying to separate themselves from the bottom of the pack. And they seem to be doing it well. We'll have another look at this fight, because at moments it looked like Schalke had the upper hand. So Schalke don't use that flanked ward as it's disappeared, which means they go straight from front to back. They think that they've zoned Crown Shot and Limit off, but the Rumble Ultimate doesn't do that much damage to Crown Shot, and Lorx is just forced to dance around the fight because of the Mordekaiser Ultimate. Then we see Trick having his uh, having the Dragon stolen away. Misfortune realizes she's in a 1v1 because she's not getting any peel, and then Abadage gets locked up as Crown Shot just kites him back, and you're actually seeing how easy it is for SK to kite out this composition from Schalke and how hard it is for them to get the team fight that they want. They just don't have the setup and they end up losing a Baron as a result. Great stuff all around from SK. Credit to Crown Shot as well. Surviving for a long time in that fight. Now has the Molten Edge, the ornament of the Infinity Edge. That upgraded item. Uh, Abyssal Mask and Sunfire Cape complete for Sacre as well. It's not a huge amount of items he can upgrade. Oh, the Black Cleaver's there, but it looks like there's going to be a Locket of the Iron Solari coming out from Limits to add one more to the pool. And uh, now with the Baron buff, 
This pressure is going to be pretty unbearable for Schalke. They're 3,000, 2,500 gold behind. And uh, SK will see if they can use this advantage. You talked about it earlier. They have the scaling comp, but you do still have to use that composition well. Yeah, let's see what they actually do with the Baron. Because this is it's one of the dangerous parts of a game when uh, you have an objective like Baron and then you aren't able to push or generate any advantages with it. You can actually see Sakre. Oh, he was looking for a TP opportunity, I think. That's why he froze in the lane. Launch to collapse now. Equalizer comes out. Genax uses the proto belt to get away, but I'm sorry, Genax. Even with the realm of death, I don't know if you survived this one. Lands a good obliterate. How about that? Not quite getting the death grass now. Sacre. Oh, they turn straight on him, but the dawning shadow. Sacre's already got one. They're looking for more. SK were quick to react to the play from Schalke, and Schalke's dreams and their hopes just shatter before their very eyes. But given channels the bullet time, but he can't survive. Not a single member of SK has died in the last two fights. Nine from Schalke have. Well, turns out that you don't need to do anything if you just wait for your opponents <laughs> to make the play instead. They killed up SK. the fist for a long time, yeah, but yes. <laughs> SK were able to respond in kind and it went heavily in their favor. They now just group up bot. They have their eyes set on the bot lane inhibitor. And they have their eyes set on the game. Schalke crumbling under the pressure of SK. It's a lot easier to do something with the Baron buff when there's no one on the enemy team to stop you. The inhibitor tower in the bottom lane will be broken open. The inhibitor short to follow, you have to feel. There it goes. 6,000, almost 7,000 gold lead for SK at the 27 minute mark. It's all done but the singing here, Vedius. So, let's have a look. Abadage. He's thinking, okay, we can get the collapse here. The problem is, it's never really a collapse because when you think you have a numbers advantage, Gen X goes, well, let's have a 1v1. Uh, he has a four level advantage. So even though he doesn't land all of his abilities, Lorix is like, I'm still losing this. And of course, yeah, he's now able to disengage, but Sakurai TP is in from behind. The rest of SK start to collapse. And you can see that Lorix doesn't have the HP as Sakurai melts through him. And the rest of SK arrive to just obliterate Schalke. They Very almost got tricked. They almost got tricked. Almost, but not enough. The former Schalke man, of course, was the jungler that took them from 7th to 3rd in Summer Split last year. And now we'll be uh, trying to work some of his magic on SK, because Schalke, ah, they're struggling. They are struggling. Static Shiv finished now for Forgiven. A little bit more I wave mean, clear. You say struggling. I mean, I would say that it's been a, an utter disappointment considering the amount of excitement and hype that existed around this roster, especially coming in. Analysts even rating them as A tier. And I can understand why they would do it, because this was like a feast or famine roster, right? Coming into the split, you expect them to go hard, you expect them to go fast, and maybe towards the end, sure, they deteriorate. Sure, maybe they're not a top three team, but expectations were not over the analysts, but many fans were like, the return of Forgiven, this is it. Yeah. And uh, I feel like so far, all this team has showcased is uh, a disappointing performance. Currently, been unable to force any of these early game plays, uh, getting killed at level one, <laughs> and now the Dragon Soul is on the table. Can Schalke find a Miracle Steal? It looks like they're not even going to try. SK will secure themselves the Soul. Mountain Soul for SK, and Betty, I agree with you. Schalke have been a disappointment. I'll be honest, I'm holding out hope. We've had null fear, we've had null fump. I'm holding up hope for the null act sin at the end of the split. We'll see if they can get there. Wait. My, ger my German's not very good. <laughs> Zero <laughs> eighteen. That's what but uh, looks like null null six is on its way pretty soon. Yep, Elder Dragon Baron up as well very very soon. That will likely be the objective that SK look for. Let, let's look at it from the other side though, because that obviously Schalke have been disappointed. But SK in this game is it Gen X that you want to really focus in on? <laughs> uh, yeah. I keep accidentally pressing the button. <laughs> <laughs> but SK this game have looked like they played around the, uh, their power points well. They played. It's still reactionary. I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like SK have just kind of punished the mistakes from Schalke. But yeah, but you have to do that, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, but it's, it's a very classic SK way of playing, I okay. would say. You know, like they did the same thing against Vitality when um, I would say that they, they still haven't showcased to me to be the most proactive team, which again, isn't the worst thing in the world when you're playing more of a scaling comp. I like a lot of their setups. I think that Trick and Limit are working pretty well together. Like we can already see them setting up, denying this vision. There's a little bit of vision still left over, but that's fine. That's going to fade out very soon. And uh, what we're likely going to see is SK look for a quick... They'll push out the waves. They should look for another reset to restock on their vision. Uh, and then they can actually look to start off this Drake. It is a little bit slow, of course, because they are running the center. 
but still. At the very least, they'll either get themselves a fight, or they'll get themselves a Baron. Oh, we'll see which one it is. Schalke trying to poke their heads in, but really unable to find anything as of yet. And uh, of course, uh, the Baron is sped up ever so slightly if Gen X is there by the Leandries with okay. that uh, sense health damage, but they don't need it. Able to sneak in past this ward. Pings coming out from SK and pings from Schalke, but right now they, they don't know what's going on. It's a very slow Baron, but it's fast enough. Yeah, it doesn't matter how fast it is if the enemy team doesn't ever get anywhere near you. Here they come. Schalke on the warpath. Back to their base. They, they can't get anywhere near it. is oh. a good bodyguard. Gen X is there as a bouncer as well. Great stuff from SK. 6,000 gold lead at the 31 minute mark. Two lanes left to push in if they want them. And with Baron buff and the Mountain Soul in their favor, you have to think it's going to be done pretty soon. Yeah. So now we just got to look for SK to end the game. <laughs> I, mean. I mean, that is what I've been looking for. Yeah. I'll be honest. I mean, it should be pretty easy, right? Crown shot's really strong. Uh, yeah. He has decided to go for Zerka Grease. I know that's a very, very controversial topic yeah, right now. Yeah, there's a big, there's that's, a big con You only get I five see, extra attacks. I see a lot of people saying like, no, it's fine. And other people being like, no, it's useless. You know, Ionian Boots of Lucidity is the most common yeah. that I usually see on a center. But, oh, fight. Will it happen? Both lands on side. Will it will happen? The question is whether Shalka can actually put up any sort of fight at all. Bullet time comes out, really doesn't do too much. Sagwe's going to land the knockup. Trick trying to get all the way on the back line. That was beautiful from Trick. Jumps all the way into the base, but Forgiven is still alive. Abadage goes golden off towards the top side. Forgiven has to run back to the base. abadage has gone. And this is SK pushing in. The fight happened, Vedius. There were some cool plays in the midst of it, but it was as done as we thought it was. SK now on the Nexus Towers. Forgiven, no summoners, no way of getting into the fight. Dreams tries to go forward, but he is smacked down with a mace. And uh, Genax looking for a couple more kills on the Fountain if he can find them. Not going to be able to get there. That will be the game. SK. They're, they're pulling a bit of a G2 here, guys. Come on. You're, you're not as good as G2. Just finish the game, SK. <laughs> you're not, well, a, you're well, not on their level. Well. There we are. SK get their second wing of Swing Split. Not holding any punches there, were you, mate? <laughs> just, just right in the gap. All right. Well, SK, pretty commanding victory. Um, we talked a lot about how they went for more of a scaling approach. Uh, they punished the early mistakes from Schalke well. There was a bit of skirmishing, there was a bit of back and forth, but when it came to that big team fight around the Drake, that was really where they cemented their control over the game. Finding a big ace followed by another big ace is uh, really what cemented the game for SK and definitely a momentum swing. They're going to end week three with a win, kind of yeah. sitting at two and four. Um, oh, you take those. You take those every day of the week. Schalke, of course, will go home. They'll think, well, we brought Lorox in. Didn't really work out for us. Still struggled. Maybe some of the issues they were experiencing with Gilius have been fixed. I know they've been very vocal about saying this is not a permanent substitution. Gilius can be back, maybe will be back in the future. But next week they play Rogue and G2. So it's not looking like the easiest schedule for them. SK have XL and Rogue as well. So a couple of games that they want to be challenging in, but will definitely be the underdogs. Well, SK is a team that has often surprised in the past. They're starting off rough, but we'll see if they can change things around. For now, they're doing okay. Again, I think this is a very solid performance overall from SK. And you can see that you do have your options uh, for player of the game. Uh, I would say that Trick had a very solid performance overall. I think Gen X also deserved a worthy shout out. His yeah. uh, use of the ultimate with the Mordekais was very solid. And you can vote for that on Twitter, by the way, at LEC, if you want to put your vote in. I agree with you, Vedius. I think both Trick and uh, Janax had very good games. I think Crown Shot should be up there. 6-1-9 and nine on the Senna. Had a couple of really good fights. But maybe the Zerkus Greaves is too much for someone. You know, maybe it's like, can't, can't vote for him. One itemization difference to the norm. Yeah, it, was a, it was a slow game to start the day, Medic. It was, Vedius. Uh, we had fun, though. We had yeah, fun. We did have fun. Important thing for us. Yeah. Hope you had fun at home as well. It's been good. <laughs> we talked a lot about fists for some reason. We, but, we uh, <laughs> I, when you say a lot, we mentioned it like three times. <laughs> and then you ended the cast by just punching us gifts. <laughs> <laughs> it to themselves. Uh, that's it from us for here. But now we're going to hand it over to uh, Law, I believe, who's standing by with Odo Omne for an interview. 
Thank you, guys, and thank you, Odo, for joining me. I just, I just want to make sure of something. Please tell me you're not going to have a breakdown because I saw the tweet you posted earlier today, and I'm really worried right now. Well, uh, if I am having one, at least it's not going to happen uh, right now with the cameras here and stuff. But <sighs> I don't know. It's really disappointing. Uh, I, mean, I know. And I can clearly see that you guys are trying your best. And I mean, I was talking to Amazing yesterday and even Crown Shot before the game. And most of people were mentioning synergy issues between you guys. Can you confirm? I mean, what are the mistakes you guys are making right now? Yeah, I mean, I think there's some issues happening. I think um, there are issues that weren't there in like the first two weeks. And I don't think it's like uh, a Gilius issue that we kind of like started losing synergy because Ludox came in. I think just going like 0-4 kind of took its toll on us. And I think we're just starting to play more and more like scared of losing, I guess. And I don't know, it's just we're not really decisive anymore. We're just kind of going to places and we're like, uh, let's try this or we can do this maybe, you know, there's just no, I'm playing the, no one's uh, pulling the trigger, and I feel like um, I can't really pull the trigger myself. And I feel like the last kind of two games, I started playing a bit worse because I don't know it's just it's just pressure, you know. Because um, usually I feel like I have good ideas on uh, what we can do or what I can do, but I don't really have the tools, you know. So that's kind of why, I don't know, my performance kind of started going bad these last two games. I wouldn't say your performance is going back to bad, to be honest, but if we can talk about the game and the team in general, I feel like being an experienced player, you have been in difficult situations in the past, and I'm wondering, what did you channel back then to get back on top, and why can't you guys do it right now? Um, I don't know, I think we just kind of have um, some bad habits, I guess, it's kind of like, scrim related um i think we're not really focusing on the right things and uh i don't know it's kind of like hard to pinpoint because it's i think it's uh it's a pretty big issue where it's kind of like a team-wide thing on uh how we all work together and stuff and i don't know i i think like at one point um our like our like uh ceo tim told us that we need to step out of our comfort zone to get better and i think that just didn't happen yet, and um, I don't know, I think it will take a big uh, hustle for us to, to kind of make it back, because next week it's uh, G2 Rogue, and um, I don't know, we really need to start picking up some wins, but more importantly, we, I think, just need to start getting some better habits and stuff, because I don't know, I think we're just missing confidence a lot after we're 0 now, and I feel like if we... If we don't like make some big changes with how we play, uh, it can snowball really bad, you know. In a way, the fact that we have a new format may be a good thing, right? Because I mean, failing in spring doesn't have the same implications now that it used to have. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at it like that, yeah, for worlds it doesn't really matter, but it's more like of a, you know. Saying this to say that you have more time to turn things around. Yeah, mostly. yeah, but it's more like uh, even like an ego thing, you know. Um, I'm not really used to being in this position and I hate being in this position and um, yeah, it's just yeah. something new and I need to deal with it. To be honest, I feel like ident identifying what's going wrong is the hardest part and you feel, I feel like you got that covered. And if I may say something, I feel like Odo Amne goofing around and joking around, maybe something that's missing for the team, so. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe at this point we just need to try a lot of things and just see what clicks, because uh, what we're doing right now uh, is really not working. See, I really want to see this smile a bit more in the weeks to come. Thank you for the uh, interview. and for thank having you for me, I guess. Saying all this, nice I wish you good luck. Losers. And thank you for this, everyone. They need some cheering up right now. Odo, thank you. We're going to take a short break and coming back, Vitality will take on Excel. Stay tuned. <laughs>